hope you're feeling good this Saturday. I am, and so glad to have you with me. Cindy Dole here. Love, share. This is Home Wizards, and we love having some happy music to kind of kick things up as we talk about ways to improve those spaces you call home, including, well, the things that can go wrong. Because, well, we know that they can, and they usually do, as my dad would say. The joys of home ownership, right? Well, with me is a guy who has more than 20 years of uh, working in repairs and maintenance and, and helping folks in terms of those things that just kind of break down from vacuums to washing machines to dishwashers to lawnmowers to, well, you name it. And uh, Chris Hall is his name, and, and he's evolved from that to something that's even cooler, and we're going to talk about all of it. So, Chris, thanks for being here. Hi, Cindy. Great to talk with you. So tell me, good to have you. First of all, explain when you first got into the whole idea of being a repairman. Uh, what made you want to be a repairman? Well, I was born that way, unfortunately. <laughs> what do <laughs> you mean you were born that way? <laughs> you just need like to fix things. Yep, I did. Ever since I was very small, I was fixing things and... Um, that sort of developed into other, you know, jobs. As I got older, I was in maintenance, and then uh-huh. uh, eventually appliance repair, and then home in- construction, and so on and so on. And um, you know, I I was starting to look at this back in 1999 and thought, boy, I'm not sure I'm going to have the energy for this when I'm 65. And and the internet was becoming more popular, and I ended up partnering with a guy who was a software developer, and we created RepairClinic.com. Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna talk all about that in just a second. It's a very very uh, innovative idea. Uh, but in terms of just you know, I love the fact that you really are a repairman. I mean, it isn't like you're just some guy uh, that wanted to have a website. You know the pain that we feel, right? Yes, I do, and I know how hard it is for people to hire a technician and. And when something breaks, they don't know if they should fix it or replace yeah. it. Yeah, yep, I've been down there. Well, so here you are. You 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 just had it, have it in your DNA. You know how not only to fix things, but when you fix things, you probably know how to tear them apart, right? You probably can do both. To, you I know? can, but you know that is a tricky part for most people. Uh, most people find the uh, you know if they only knew how to you know, take it apart or get that panel off, then they could mm-hmm. actually make the repair. That is one of the hardest parts. Yeah. Uh, and so as a repairman, you would go to people's homes, and, and what would what would be some of the problems that you would encounter? You know, for appliances, you, you know, it varies depending on the appliance, but washing machines, you're usually looking at the things that are moving or pumping water, so you have motors and pumps and switches, timers, that type of thing, Mm -hmm. circuit boards. And then for dishwashers, it's usually a water inlet valve or something to do with the the pump and motor that sprays the water on the dishes. It varies for each appliance, but uh, usually it's the parts that are moving and and performing some function that break. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of inevitable, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And and for refrigerators, you you have a, a whole different thing there because you have your children using uh, the shelves and doors as ladders. So, <laughs> so we see tons of uh, shelves and, and door brackets and things like that. We, we sell just thousands and thousands of those. Uh-huh, I bet. And, and you mentioned the whole idea of hiring a repairman. I mean, I, you know, there reaches a point where there's you either want to do it yourself or you hire it done, and, and sometimes you, you are able to do it yourself, but you just don't have the time, you know, and so you might want to hire somebody like you to come and, and fix it. Or maybe, um, you know, you just uh, you're just overwhelmed to even think how you do do something like that. And so when, when people try to hire a repairman, I'm guessing that they were, when you would go to people's homes, they'd have a lot of stress and, and doubt and, and wondering if they can trust the person. Oh, that's the the trust is the biggest issue. That and the guy showing up, of course, yeah, uh, which can be a, a, a hassle for some people. But you know, more and more families uh, don't have anybody at home during the day, and it's um, very difficult for them because the repair person will say, uh, "You need to stay home all day, and I'll be there whenever I get there." And and it's not their fault. You know, they have a lot of calls that day, and it's uh, more a question of how quickly they finish up their other jobs. So there's nothing really wrong with the technicians. It's just that our culture has changed in a way that makes it a lot less convenient for the homeowner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what we've done is we've tried to put more power in the hands of the homeowner by giving them the tools they need to make the repair themselves right. if they're inclined to do that. So here you have this website, and it's called repairclinic.com. And so for free, people can go on and get information in terms of well to basically be our own repairman yeah the coolest thing is in the last year we've added 370 step-by-step videos 
on how to repair all kinds of different things, washing machines, ranges, lawnmowers. Um, and we've created these videos very carefully uh, so, that, so we don't leave anything out and so that anybody could follow the video and use the tools we recommend uh, to make that repair. Mm-hmm. And, and on the videos, I love how you have these little warning signs now, watch out for electricity and shock, <laughs> or watch out for heavy weight in terms of if you're going to be moving that big washing machine, things like that. You kind of you, you put a lot of safety warning in there. We do. You know, it is possible to hurt yourself, um, you know, repairing just about anything. Mm-hmm. So as much as possible, we warn you when uh, doing a particular repair has a, a particularly high level of uh, danger. But it's, you know, it's, it's up to the person and their skill level to determine whether what they're doing is safe or not. It's impossible for us to foresee every situation. Mm-hmm. And have you heard back from people who have been visiting your website, in which you've had around for a number of years now, uh, of the demographics of people who are really physically repairing their own things? We do. It's pretty exciting. We've been around for 12 years now. We have more than 2 million customers. And ironically, even though we're in Michigan, our largest market is Southern California. And that just is because that's where all the people are. At least that's a a very big market. And so we have found that about 35% of the people that use our service are female. Um, Most of them are homeowners because they're the ones who are responsible for the appliances or or the lawn and garden equipment. Um, and we find that uh, it really varies. There are some people who are very handy. They're technicians. They just, they just want the part. They don't need any help from us. And then we, have, uh, we frequently get messages from a 65-year-old um, you know, mother of five or a, or a grandmother who's 84 who says that she just fixed her washing machine for the first time in her life. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah. It's very exciting. It's very empowering. I have four daughters and six sisters, and so I'm particularly interested in, in uh, being able to empower women out there for, to do these re- repairs themselves. That's awesome. Very clever. And so people, when we go to the website, you again, it's, you know, the information's all there for free, and you're going to show us through all the different things, and we're going to talk through some of the diff- different kind of repairs we can get smarter on. And then there comes a time when we're going to need to get a part, and so we get that through the website. Exactly. And we've made it very easy to order We've taken high-resolution pictures of every single part we've ever sold. So when you go to the website and you put your model number in for your appliance or your lawnmower or your snowblower or whatever it is, well, I guess you guys don't have snowblowers. <laughs> well, I guess in certain parts, but... <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah. Um, but anyway, once you put your model number in, we'll show you all the parts for your model, and you can sort it by according to the part type that you need. Mm-hmm. And then you'll see a high-resolution photo, and if we've created a video, that will be right there as well. Isn't that great? That's terrific. And the people that, um, that are featured in the videos, these are repair people that are part of your staff. Yes, that's correct. We cr- create all the videos in-house, and the, uh, you know, the voiceover person is, is a professional video production person we have on, in, on staff. But the person that you see actually doing the repairs is a seasoned uh, technician, usually with 20-plus uh, years' experience. Excellent. Well, let's let's pretend that um, since this is radio and theater of the mind, let's walk people through as if they were seeing some of these repairs being done and, and maybe give some pointers right now on, on advice that you would say for some of these things that can all of a sudden go kerplunk, okay? Sure. So, so let's say, first of all, the washing machine. My washing machine is just not working. I don't know what's the matter. What are some of the warning signs? How, help us diagnose it, and what do we do? Well, washing machines have, um, th- there's a few motions that they have which are pretty easy to diagnose if they're not working. So it could be that it's not spinning, or it could be that it's not agitating, or it could be that water's not getting into the machine or going out of the machine. So those are kind of the four things that we uh, generally people complain of one of them is not working right. And then you have the phenomena of front loader versus top loader. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And we just, uh, I think two years ago now, we... In the United States, the uh, front loaders have overtaken the top loaders in sales. Um, and so there's still millions of top loaders out there, but more and more our advice is leaning toward the front loaders. So talking about top loaders, you know, they almost always have a belt or a, or a coupling device that connects the motor to the drum, sometimes through a transmission. And often that belt or coupling device will fail. So if it's not spinning or agitating, that's a possibility. 
Another common one is the lid switch. When you on a top loading washing machine, when you close the lid, it may, it con- connects with a little switch there that uh, allows it to spin. So if your machine is doing everything except spinning, then there's a good chance that lid switch is defective. And then of course, if water is not getting into the machine or it's trickling in very slowly, or you're only getting one temperature, maybe hot instead of cold, it's almost always the water inlet valve that's bad. And these things are. Uh, all, all of these things that I've mentioned are relatively easy to replace, and we have those parts in stock. Those would be common parts. All right. Well, don't go away because we have more things we need to help us fix, like the dryer and the dishwasher, and the list goes on and on. We're talking with uh, the creator of this great website called RepairClinic.com. And uh, after we learn more, you can go to the site and, and watch some of these videos and, and figure out ways to be your own men in black repairman or woman in black. Home Wizard Cindy Dole. We're back in just a flash. I don't know. I guess I'm handy. I'm not handy all the time. But, you know, I'm handy enough, and then when I'm not, I hire someone to help me. That's just how it is. Cindy Dole here, Home Wizards. But are you handy? We know you're dandy. But, I mean, you know, things that break down around the house, you can fix them. And Chris Hall is going to show us. He's a repairman from 20 years and now uh, part founder of this website called RepairClinic.com where they show you for free the videos and everything on how to do it, whether it's the washing machine, the dryer, the dishwasher, the lawnmower, you name it. And then and then the parts you can get to uh, to basically get it like new again. So, Chris, thanks for, uh, for sp- spending part of your Saturday. We were just talking about the washing machine. Yeah. And then if we were to, to fix this washing machine that, let's say, wasn't spinning or the water wasn't getting in or getting out, how, how involved, what kind of time is involved, and how do we get that part in there that needs to be replaced? Well, for a technician, a uh, typical repair is about 30 minutes. So I would say, you know, double or triple that for oh. a typical. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, that is a reality check, I guess. So it's going to yeah, be your all day. <laughs> it's, most, it's mostly because you haven't done the repair before, so you won't know any of the little tricks or the little time savers mm. that a technician might do. So, mm. you know, if it's a 30-minute repair for a technician and it takes you an hour or an hour and a half, I think that's a pretty good trade-off. At least you z- didn't have to give, set aside a whole day. Okay, so we, let's say if it is the belt that we need to replace, we're going to literally have to get this washing machine on its side. Sometimes you do, but most of the time you no. can just tilt it back. Just tilt it, okay. Right, and then and then in, in a couple of cases you're just going to remove a panel so that you can get to the belt. Um, but, yeah, most of the time you don't have to lay the machine down. There are very few repairs that require that. Okay, well, that's a little less intimidating. That sounds yeah. all right. And then in yeah, terms of getting the panels off, that isn't that hard to do. It's usually very easy as long as you know where the screws are or where the little clips are. They hide them really just for aesthetic reasons. So the manufacturer doesn't want you to see these screws and clips. Uh, they don't look as attractive. Um, but once you know where they are, it's often a putty knife or a screwdriver is all that's required to remove it. Mm-hmm. And then in terms of buying a part to replace you know, whatever was on the fritz with your washing machine, uh, as opposed to buying a whole new washing machine, I mean, the savings there has got to be pretty big. Yeah, we've estimated that the cost of a repair is 75% for the professional to come. That could be the cost of the trip out there, the labor, and so on. And 25% of the cost is the part. Mm -hmm. So if you do it yourself, a $100 repair for a technician might cost you 25 Yeah. But at the same time, though, I mean, I'm kind of torn because there's so many more energy-efficient appliances out there, and you kind of wonder, especially if your your washing machine is seven years plus old, is it time just to say goodbye? You know, you probably deal with that with that dilemma with a lot of folks, don't you? Yes, we do, and I think that's a really good one. The top-load washing machines are highly inefficient, so if you have a six-, seven-, eight-year-old top-load washing machine and it needs a repair that's more than, say, 30% of the cost of the machine – then I would say you're probably due for a, a new machine, and I recommend a front loader. Mm-hmm. Um, but if in normal circumstances, we wait until the cost gets to about half of the, uh, the cost of the repair is about half of the cost of the appliance before we say it's mm-hmm. time to start thinking of a new one. Okay. Um, and if you're doing it yourself, that almost never happens because yeah. the cost of a part rarely hits the price of half the appliance. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about dryers, because we know, because we talk a lot with Consumer Reports, uh, and I've dealt with my own repairman uh, around the house, and first of all, my repair guy said, don't uh, even think about um, 
worrying about your, your dryer. He says the, the dryer technology hasn't changed, has it? Hasn't changed since the beginning. That's pretty much true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So why that is, I don't get it. But, um, but at the same time, I mean, what, it, should you replace? Is it better just to get a whole new dryer or just keep repairing the old dryer? My repairman says keep, re, you know, keep repairing that old dryer until it dies, that that's going to be a better deal because the new technology on the, on the street or at the store is never going to beat what you have. Well, I agree when it comes to a dryer that you can Yeah, much, dryer. Yeah, you can repair those things forever um, because they general, they're very simple machines, and the reason they haven't changed much in 40 years is because the design 40 years ago was actually pretty good. And so the technology of tumbling the clothes and blowing air across them that's been heated by either electricity or gas, it's still a very sound technology. It's a sound way to do it. And all the dryers out there still function that exact same way. So I guess we should be tipping our hat to the guy who, or the woman who came up with that idea, because yeah. that that's really stood the test of time. Um, but he's right. Your techni- the technician that told you that is right. You can fix those things really almost indefinitely. So what are some of the things that can go wrong with a dryer that we can get smart about on your website? Very common problems are belts, rollers, which kind of support the drum and roll with it, uh, the fan blade in some of them uh, is made of plastic and sometimes kind of falls apart over time. And then you've got timer controls, uh, door switches, and motors. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, in my, when I used to be out there on the road, I would have maybe 10 parts on my truck for dryers. And I could fix almost any dryer out there uh, with almost any repair they needed. Uh, there's just not that many different parts, and they're pretty simple to repair. Mm-hmm. And, and the parts are cheap. Generally speaking, yes. Yeah. If you need a motor, it's going to cost you a little more, but almost all of the parts for a dryer are going to be below $40. See, that's great, and especially with the economy. Even though we're bouncing back, we still want to save, and so that's really neat that we can, you know, stretch our, our pocketbook a little bit further. That's great. Um, all right, how about the dishwasher? The dishwasher, uh, would you say that that, if, if we have a dishwasher that's more than seven years old, don't, don't even worry about, refi- you know, fixing it, get a new one, or just keep hanging on? Dishwashers, usually the problem with the dishwasher is that it's not cleaning the dishes as well as it used to. And if that's the case, about 90% of the time it's because it's not getting enough water. And um, there's one little valve called the water inlet valve, which controls the water entering the dishwasher. And so I carried those on my truck by the dozens. I might have had 20 of those because it was so common. Uh, And that still is the case, even with newer dishwashers. So making sure it gets enough water is a big deal, but uh, you're right. Once they hit seven or eight or nine years and then they have a major repair, you should start considering a new one, particularly if you want one that uses less energy, which the newer ones do, or if you want one that's quieter, which is a big um, concern for people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so all these videos are on your website, repairclinic.com, and uh, you also have tips on what vacuum repair. We do. We, um, we started uh, about a year ago offering repair help and parts for vacuum cleaners, and we're adding more and more. So we have about 10 brands, 10 of the major brands, you know, the Hoover, Eureka, Bissell, that type of thing. And uh, we now have almost all of the parts that you would normally have to order, and we're adding more every day. So And soon we'll be having wet dry vacs. We don't have those yet, but we'll be having those up on the website very soon. And um, we're having a couple of the other um, smaller brands we're going to be bringing in as well. Would you say as an experienced repairman, I mean, let's just kind of compare it to going to the pharmacy. I'm always told, hey, just go generic. It's the same as everything else. Does that apply to these repair parts for all these different things that can break down in our house? Is generic or the cheaper as good as the more expensive? Mm, In most cases, no. Uh, At least not for appliances. They're There are generic appliance parts out there, not a whole lot of them. There's only a couple of companies making them, and we only sell a handful of them, and usually only because there isn't a OEM equivalent. But for appliance parts, I strongly recommend that the customer buy OEM. Um, There isn't a strong aftermarket presence. Now, in lawnmowers and string trimmers and backpack blowers and all that, uh, there are some very strong aftermarket companies making high-quality parts, so I, I feel that in uh, lawnmower and small engine parts, you're okay with aftermarket parts in some cases, and I would say in most cases. Uh, but in appliances, that's not what I would recommend. 
Okay. Well, it was great talking to you. We'd love to talk to you again. Uh, Chris Hall with RepairClinic.com, and can't wait to watch some more of those videos on your website. And who knows what I'm going to repair next. I can't wait. <laughs> you got to have a happy Father's Day, by the way. Are you, Dad? I am. I have five children. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Well, I hope you get a lot of great gifts and have a great family meal together, and, and thanks for s- spending part of your Saturday with us. Well, thank you, Cindy. Oh, boy. Great website and great business, repairclinic.com. Hope you had fun listening to that. Hey, hey we can do this. We can fix these things, the, the washer, the dryer, the dishwasher, you name it. Well, coming up next Saturday, the fun continues because this is what we do, Home Wizards, every Saturday, 2 to 4. Next Saturday, Eric Stromer, my buddy and I, you've seen him on HGTV and AOL. We're going to be there live at the L.A. Convention Center for the Dwell on Design event and it's going to be so much fun i hope you'll come by and say hi actually you can go there and see all the cool things friday saturday and sunday but our broadcast on all things modern and hip on home wizards next saturday from two to four be sure to go to the website cindydole.com check the past shows email me would you and until next time remember this happy father's day and the keys under the mat bye-bye